Uh, gold, meantime, retreating after its biggest one-day gain of the year. Let's get to Rick Santelli on how trading gold has changed over the years, something you know a lot about, Rick. Absolutely, and I'd like to welcome Frank Lesh, my guest, with Futures Path. Frank and I have worked together on many occasions. Uh, we've done radio shows together, and as Carl was alluding to, I traded gold futures 79.80. When adjusted for inflation, it made its true high, I believe, in February 1980, adjusted for inflation around a 2300 level. What's changed in the gold market over that run, Frank? Well, one of the biggest changes we've seen in the market is the fact that it's turned into a security here, the evolution of ETFs. Now, what it has done is it enabled a lot of uh, people to participate in this gold market that never would have been in it. There's only few people who really want to own gold bars. And, and how many coins do you really want to have? And what do you do? Do you store these? Uh, where are you going to keep it? You're paying storage, you know. So there's just so much of that demand for gold there. And, and of course, we trade as a currency in gold, but, you know, it's trading against other currencies in gold. But with the evolution of the ETF, there's a lot of people who, you know, it took uh, the complication out of investing in gold. You can buy it. It's on paper. But didn't you know take, where you're long didn't at? Didn't it take the whole point away to some extent as well, Frank? And I hate to interrupt you, but back when I was trading gold, I remember the newspapers used to have on the front page of the Tribune the gold watch, the silver watch. People were taking antique silver sterling that was passed down and melting it. Uh, it it's not the same now. If you're trading paper, the, the notion of many who trade gold, the Ayn Randers, as I call them, is that if the financial world comes to an end, okay, they're going to have the gold. Well, if you're playing an ETF, you're going to have a piece of paper. You're not going to. So it takes away some of what I perceive are, are the driving forces behind the run up in the early stages after the crisis. Your thoughts? So, well, yeah, yeah, all of this is true because you're not going to be able to get at that gold in a crisis uh, easily. And, and just I mean, my opinion, folks, but I don't know in the garage of the ETFs if all the gold that's supposed to be there is there. I know that may be heresy, but Frank, what I'm saying is what all gold bugs talk about, correct? Well, yeah, indeed. Uh, but there's people out there who wonder how much gold is in Fort Knox as well. You know, we've always had that. I think the uh, Germans have some issues about where some of the gold maybe <laughs> as well. They didn't get to see all of it, did That's they? That's true. <laughs> but th the point is here is it's turned into a security, and you can buy and sell it on paper. So in the end, if you you're can. trading gold, one sentence, we're out of time. How should the average investor now look at gold then? Well, you know, you buy it the same reason you buy an equity, price appreciation. And if you're not getting that price appreciation, why hold it? That's gotcha. one of the things we're seeing right now, liquidation of this paper asset. Thanks, Frank Lesh. Carl, back to you.